All right. Hello. Hello. Happy Wednesday. All right. So today we're going to just do a bunch of paint pour techniques, uh, some swipes, some dirty pours, probably some flip cups, um, a whole bunch of different fluid acrylic paint pour techniques. And I'll talk about some tips and tricks why we do, why we go through each of the techniques. And also, I was going to discuss a little bit about the differences between like traditional fluid acrylics, traditional paint pouring, and then also the bloom technique. Because I think there's a lot of confusion between the bloom technique and then just regular traditional paint pouring. So right here, we have this as a 10 by 10 inch uh, painting, and it's all dry. And I wanted to show you the dried results. This is from my puddle pour uh, paint pour. That was uh, yesterday's video. It is uh, during this basics of paint pouring series that I'm doing. So um, this one dried, uh, it did spread out quite a bit. It did have more black negative space, but that's all right. Um, obviously my canvas must not have been perfectly level because it did come off this side a little bit more in the back, but that's okay. I, I really am enjoying how this one turned out. The colors really were nice and bold through here. So this was, I just wanted to show you how that one dried out. And then we have a whole bunch of six by six inch canvases we're gonna do today. And then an eight by, two different eight by eight inch canvases. So, all right, we've got just a variety of techniques but I'm going to go ahead and um, this first one is going to be a, um, a flip and drag of a uh, Gatorade bottle. So we're just putting this real nice light pink down. Just using a palette knife to get it over the edge. And I believe that is Apple Barrel's uh, Cameo Pink. And it's just mixed with Floetrol, just my same as they're all mixed, uh, three parts Floetrol, the one part paint. And these are the deep canvases, the gallery wrapped. So trying to get it nice and over each of the edges. And then we're going to put some colors in the lid of a Gatorade and then flip that over. All right. And there's no silicone in that base color, but all the colors are mixed just the same. So I just have the lid to a Gatorade. So we've got this. Uh, I believe it's Apple Barrel's Mountain Blue, and this does have silicone. It only has like one or two drops. So you just don't need very much, just a little bit. And this is more of a like dusty rose pink. This teal I mixed up on my own, so it doesn't really have a, it's a mixture of colors and brands and this is a uh, cobalt blue. We're going to go ahead and put a little bit of that pink that's in the background. And a little bit of white. Then we're going to flip this and drag it through. Let's see. Hmm, I'm trying to see if think of any more colors here. I do have this kind of mint green. I think that would look nice on that pink. All right. So you can take and just flip this over. You know what? I have some color shift. I have, what is this one? The Orchid Flash. And it does have silicone in it. I'm just going to put a little bit here. Put a little bit and a cat hair. Silly cats. All right. So now we're just going to flip this. And you can flip this with a credit card or something if it's a little bit 
uh, it's a kind of nerve wracking getting this flipped right. But it's okay if a little seeps out or anything. All right, now we're just going to kind of drag this through. But I am going to get where my fingers got there. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to barely lift up and kind of let a little bit of paint out at a time. All right, that's pretty. Now we're just going to kind of stretch it out a little bit. Give it a little bit of a torch. I'm just slowly tilting it so I don't lose too much of those cells. All right, now I'm gonna wipe my hands off and then I've got a little bit of aquarium tubing that I'm gonna just spray out a couple of or blow out a couple of spots by blowing through some aquarium tubing. So some of this color shift through here and up through here so once it dries, that'll have a real nice shimmer to it with the color shift. So, all right. Tempted to keep messing with it, but I think I'll leave it. Liking that blue, how it pops off that um, light pink. So, all right, we'll go ahead and move that and work on uh, maybe a dirty port, or actually I'm going to do a napkin ring. So, which is pretty much an open cylinder. So we have another one of those six by six inch canvases with the real deep here. And so this one, I think I'm going to go ahead and do kind of a um, real light brown uh, tan background. And then we're going to use some, uh, that same blue, that mountain blue, a little bit of this, uh, this kind of darker uh, brick red and some of the army green color I mixed up on last week's uh, live stream. In the last week's live stream, I did post some of those uh, ones, uh, some of the dried pieces from last week's live stream. I posted those pictures on my community tab. Is somebody chat? Cause it's, oh, is it? Okay, let's see what's going on with the chat. Cause no, it doesn't show that anybody is, shoot. Um, just a second. Let's see if I can say something. I'm gonna say hi real quick. Let's see if it'll work. Well, let's me chat. Let's see. Oh my gosh, a bunch of people. Oh, Roger, how you doing? It's been a little while. Noval is in here. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, uh, passion for pets. How are you doing? Oh my gosh, I don't know. For some reason, the chat was not working. But as soon as I chatted, I said something, all of a sudden it went scrolling by like a bunch of chat. So um, that's really weird. 
I thought, okay, I'll just chat away, even though nobody's in here, I'll just keep talking away. <laughs> but uh, I guess there were people here the whole time. So what I have is just a napkin ring from the Dollar Tree. And we're gonna use that as kind of like an open cylinder paint pour. We're just gonna drag that through just like that last one. So how strange. See, now it says successfully connected. So for some reason the chat wasn't connected, but the stream itself was. So I don't know how that works. This does have silicone in this color, the mountain blue. So that's so bizarre. Yeah, I thought, oh gosh, nobody's saying a word. Okay, no big deal. Let's get this brick red color. This kind of army green. It's olive green that I've toned down with a little bit of white. A teal color. And I'm gonna go back with this little bit more of this blue. And you know what, I think I want to put just a tad bit more red because that red will really pop on this. Just a little bit though. So, all right, so how bizarre, yeah. Good to see you too, Passion. Oh my gosh, I can't believe the chat. Because Mike says, is your chat not working or? <laughs> Usually either the stream just doesn't work usually or, you know, it doesn't usually the chat not work, but the stream work. <laughs> so, all right, now we're going to just kind of spread this out and that'll pull some of those to the surface, the color. And then we'll give it a little torch, which will really kind of pull it to the surface. So... Today, I was going to talk a little bit about different types of paint pours and different types of mediums and stuff. Yeah, the chats are weird sometimes. It's weird how it works. I was not ignoring anybody, that's for sure. So just give it a little torch and it really pulls some of that to the surface. And then also using some aquarium tubing to blow in round and blow out the edges a little bit. So good to see everyone. Thank you for stopping by. All right. So pull this down just a little bit that direction. So we got a little bit too much paint there in the center, but we're just gonna pull it there way. Right off the side and then back here to the other. Just slowly though. So I think I am gonna come in with the palette knife and just swipe a couple little so. Oh, I missed you too, Roger. You're so sweet, sweet Roger. How have you been? It's been hot. Are you, have you gone to, down to the slabs? Or are you still up uh, at kind of more home base? It's too hot in the slabs right now. So um, this paint pour is just mixed with Floetrol. So this is what we would call like a traditional paint pour. And this has been around, I actually did a video. I'm trying to decide where I wanna swipe again, but I actually did a video um, about two years ago that was um, like the history of paint pouring. And it's actually been around since 
what I could come up with, it maybe has been around even longer, but at least since the 20s. And uh, even in the 60s, Janis Joplin painted her car with this technique, with the kind of poured down the side of her Porsche, if you guys remember, or have seen pictures. <laughs> so, all right, now we have an eight by eight inch. Huh, Novala, can't see other messages coming in. Um, not sure. So there's up at the top of the chat, there is where a drop down menu that says top chat or live chat. First try that. You can see if you can go to live chat. You want to be on the drop down menu of live chat. And then if that doesn't work, try refreshing your stream to refresh the page. And that might work. I'm not sure. So now we're going to use this mint green as kind of our background color. We're doing all these kind of negative space ones where there's a base color. So um, these are all what we would call like a traditional paint pour. And then um, a couple of years ago, Shelly Carruthers, she came out with a um, technique and it was like her personal technique, which was a bloom, a bloom technique. Now that one is a little bit more complicated and she happens to live in Australia. So it has like Australian um, uh, ingredients in it. Well, um, people have, and I've uh, developed a recipe with American uh, ingredients, US ingredients. And so you can make it work, but it's like a different, a totally different thing. It's um, so there's like the traditional paint pours where we have like, um, uh, just flow troll or people even mix with just water or they mix with like glue or uh, other pouring mediums and and then sometimes silicone not always sometimes other oils and stuff but they don't really say we have a cell activator so that's the um when when you're like more talking like a cell activator that is the bloom technique so we've got this minty green color we're going to put some of this. Um, we're going to do kind of a dirty a ribbon pour through it and then stretch the ribbon pour out. So um, the bloom technique, now that one's got what they call a cell activator. A lot of times for the base, they use house paint. It's got a bunch of other stuff mixed in with it. It's like a totally different thing. But um, I think a lot of people came into this in the last like year or two since the bloom technique was developed and they're getting like traditional like flip cups, dirty pours, all those sort of things kind of mixed up. It worked. All right. All right. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so now I'm going to put a little bit of this pink in. And I'm kind of squeezing that a little bit hard so that it kind of goes all the way down through. A little bit of white. Oh, I saw a chunk. Just a moment. We're going to now, I have a, um, we're going to try to fish that out. So that's what I kind of wanted my talk about, just that little bit about, um, the differences between those. So a lot of people get them confused. And so my basics of paint pouring uh, lessons are just more the traditional paint pouring. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this palette knife and I'm just going to like, not a full stir, but like just around a couple times. I've got a drip here, no big deal. Yeah, um, the bloom has got a lot of additives. It's a total different. Um, I did do a video with kind of more um, a basic, like U.S. supplies, U.S. ingredients. But um, I think the blooms are beautiful, but uh, I don't know. Like, I, I just, I like just going back to basics and not having to worry about having so much ingredients. And I kind of like these sort of pours. It's just easy to have everything mixed up, ready to go. And I just, I know how to do this, how it's going to work a little bit better. But I'm still doing blooms every so often, just kind of experiment and 
practice, you know, with them a little bit. Go ahead and turn this a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just slowly going to each edge, then back to the center. And it does have a little bit of that color shift. So it's going to, once it's dry, have a little shimmer to it. Yeah, my kids too. <laughs> so, all right. Let me wipe my hands off. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the camera doesn't pick up the color shift. The So it's the orchid flash. So it's got a little bit of a purpley flash to it. Um, once it dries, I'll be able to show you the real good shimmer to it. Such a beautiful shimmer to that uh, color shift. So I'm going to go ahead and run. So that had quite a bit of paint. So it's really dripping off the sides. I'm going to run my finger along the sides just to help it not. Because um, if you leave it dripping, 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 gravity is going to do its thing and pull quite a bit of that paint down off there. So, all right, that is just kind of like a, a stretched ribbon pour or kind of a stretched dirty pour or kind of, I don't know, there's so many techniques that they're so similar, but you could really call it either thing. <laughs> so, thank you. All right, I'm going to get this one moved. I'm going to go ahead and grab the next one. We're going to do another one of those eight by eight inch ones. Go ahead and back that up a little bit. All right. Sorry about my reach there. So now I'm thinking on this one, I kind of want to do a swipe. So let's just do, I think we'll just do kind of like a, a whimsy swipe. We're just going to kind of put colors down at random. We're going to go with some teals, kind of the same as the very first pour we did, similar colors. And then I'm going to swipe a palette knife through. So how is everybody doing? How's your week? Uh, we've had some beautiful weather here. Uh, after the hot, hot, hot summer the Northwest has had, we're getting kind of a break from that heat. And it's just perfect, like 80 degrees, uh, mid-70s, not bad weather. So it's kind of nice reprieve from that heat we've had. We've had like record heat in the Northwest. So now I'm going to come in with some of this pink and I'm just putting random puddles and then I'm going to swipe through. So the teal I had, the first two teals I put down, both had silicone. So I'm just about half my colors are going to have the silicone and half are not. I'm going to go ahead and um, put a little bit, I think, white. And this is just an eight by eight inch canvas. I think we'll just throw just a little bit of gold in there too. Wait, cause I don't have very much mixed up. So just a little bit of gold to kind of swipe through. It's pretty much at the end of its The heat will really mess with your paints if they're in bottles for long term, you can tell. So, all right. Hot and muggy around there. Oh, I can't handle the muggy. Oh, yeah. Humidity, muggy. Oh, not a fan. So 
So just gently swiping across the top with the palette knife, then I wipe it clean. And I kind of decide where I'm going to come in. You know what? I think I'm going to switch to a little bit smaller palette knife. This little 8 by 8 inch canvas, you really don't really need much of a palette knife here. And sometimes I'll come in. This is quite the blue here. I'm going to break it up a little bit right there and then swipe back through it just a little bit right there. Takes almost a moment for the cells to develop and kind of pop up there when you first swipe through it doesn't look like you know too much and then they start kind of doing their thing and pop into the surface wiping the palette knife clean each time if you could, you'd take a pass as well. Yeah, I bet. Uh, yeah, it's it's we've um, had really record, record, record heat here, and so it's been really nice the last couple of days to be able to have the windows open and airing the house out, and that's kind of what we've been doing. Just feels nice to have. Um, like our normal weather here <laughs> so all right um now you can come in with uh you can just be done you can come in with a little bit of uh torching yeah i'm loving the gold uh just a little pops of gold not too much now you could have just left it you didn't really have to torch it but just seeing if we can get a little bit more mainly small little cells will pop up there but um, these colors are really pretty together and it kind of matches, but doesn't match that first one I did because same colors, just different technique. All right, making a little bit of space to get that one moved over. But um, so does anybody have any questions? Any questions, I mean, about anything or any questions particularly about, <laughs> gosh, tongue tied today. Um, about like the difference between like a traditional paint pour and like a um, bloom. S blooms are kind of like a three part. They always pretty much have a base. Then they have your like, well, they have a base, what you call a pillow paint is what they call it. And then they have your colors. Then they have like a cell activator. Well, a traditional paint pour, you just pretty much have um, the same, uh, it's all just mixed the same. I don't mix my base any different than my cell activator. Then, but the only difference is the silicone. But no other additives. It's not different paint. It's all the same paint. So, all right. I'm going to go ahead and move this one aside. As we've kind of chatted, you can see a few more cells have kind of worked their way up, popping to the surface. And that's just that silicone breaking the surface tension and making its way to the top. So nice little pops of gold shimmer. And um, I'm just loving that pink with that mint green. It's really beautiful together. It's a very popular um, color combination, I've noticed. So, yeah, it's still kind of evolving as we chat. That's kind of the cool thing with the swipes. Oh, I do see, though, this corner has kind of a little bit of a, a bald spot, but no worries. Just come in there with that color that's closest to that corner. And all right, so I'm going to go ahead and move this one to the side. We've got three more here. We've got three more of these um, six by six inch canvases. And I just have them, you know, in these aluminum pans and then also these metal ones from Walmart. And they're those deep canvases. And then I just have cups upside down and that's what I set it on. So, all right. Um, I'm thinking about doing another one of those kind of stretched ones. So I'm putting this kind of dusty pink color 
and we're going to put a little bit of paint in a cup and then pour kind of ribbons and then stretch those out like we did that other one, that first eight by eight inch. Go ahead and grab my palette knife. Make sure it's nice and clean. It does have blue on it. Don't want to contaminate that pink with the blue. I'm not trying to get all the way to the edges. Just kind of evening it out a little bit. When we stretch the pour, we're going to get more to the edges. Um, going to just reuse the cup. I like to reuse my supplies. But when they're stuck together, it doesn't help. All right, so here's a cup that just was used already before. Gonna go ahead, you guys, yeah, you can see it if I set it there. I'm gonna use some of that dark cobalt blue with a little bit of that mint. Same color combination, but now with a pink background. Just a little bit of each color. We don't really need too much. Very small canvas. And then we'll stretch it out. So I think I am going to put in this one just a tad of that army green. But like not much. <laughs> All right. Ah, I'll put a little bit more. All right. Gonna put a little bit of this lighter pink color. Really don't need all that much. And both of the teals have silicone. And I believe that army green color has silicone. I'm actually not sure on that one. Um, okay, so the cookie sheets from the Dollar Tree, I, I, I do not have luck from those. I am a huge advocate. I always talk about the Dollar Tree, and I'm like always saying, buy this, buy this. But those cookie sheets, they bend so easy. So um, I've had kind of... What kind of happened, actually, they used to a couple of years ago have, so I'm kind of thinking I better give this a little, like just a little stir. Now we're going to go just ribbons through. But um, about a year and a half, two years ago, probably just before the pandemic started, um, it seems like they, the quality really went downhill on their, um, those cookie sheets and stuff, but they um, kind of warp and bend. And then it's really hard to get your canvas level after that. But um, these like uh, brownie pans, they seem to stay a little bit sturdier. Just kind of stretching that over the edge. A little bit back to the center, over this edge. Kind of helping it with my finger as I go. Okay, just a second. We're going to stop. Make sure we have a clean skewer. I can see it's not wanting to. All right. Sometimes you can just help it with the finger a little bit. I kind of, I don't want to lose those cells, but they're going to go down over the edge. Those couple of cells on that edge were kind of cute. <laughs> but I like that because you get a nice um, negative space. It's got... Uh, like it breaks up the eye to kind of look. Oh, the cooling racks. Yeah, I like those cooling racks. What I used to do, but um, I just kind of 
gotten I don't know it worked great but I used to put cooling racks in the um instead of the cups and set everything on those cooling racks that also works really well so this one again is evolving kind of in front of our eyes we'll give it a little torch it doesn't really need it but we'll see what it does really pretty so um what i will do is you can see that there's a little bit of edges i usually wait and then after the live stream i get those edges but you got to make sure you get all your edges uh it's so much easier when it's wet and then also if you have custom colors mixed up which sometimes you do it's really hard to then match color match and get the edges with the same exact color if it was a custom mixed color so just going to go ahead and get a little bit of these edges now. But thank you. Thank you. And it just kind of moves and evolves. and But loving that little bit of green in there. I wasn't sure if that would be the right tone of green for that. But I think it, it did work well. So all right. I think I'm going to go ahead and move that one aside. And then um, go kind of more in the neutral brown tones here for this next one. Kind of brown and red kind of tones. Kind of fallish. So we're going to do the same exact technique, but we're going to do it with the, um, our second paint pour where we did it with this tan background. And we um, did got some red in there and some... We're going to do that. All right, just a second. I've got to poke it with the skewer. It's not wanting to work for us. All right. Fall off spells, just take the lid off. Okay, so that last technique was just like a stretched ribbon pour. We're going to do the same exact thing, but with like more of a neutral, uh, kind of with reds, fall colors. All right. Have another cup. These are just from the Dollar Tree, actually. They're little tiny, like, solo cups. We've got some burnt sienna, some of this uh, like brick red, some of that minty green. And this one has this teal, has some silicone, a little bit of um, yellow ochre. A little bit of this mountain blue. Now we're going to give it just a little stir. Not much. And then we're going to do the same exact technique, kind of a ribbon pour and then stretch it out. So, all right. All right. Didn't get too much of that yellow ochre. I actually wish I had a little bit more of that, but hopefully it'll kind of show up a little bit, pop out there. Just stretching them to the edge, back to the center a bit. Slowly kind of the edge, trying not to lose too much of that, that we just... All right. So very similar paint pour to the last one, just a total different color palette. And then back to the center.
Let me wet my hands clean. And then we'll work on some of the edge a little bit. So let me get the clog out of that brown, that base color we used for a brown. And then I'll come in and squeeze a little bit of that to get up that edge a little bit. And then this is our second to the last one. So we have one more. Oh, sorry about that. I hit the with the torch when I went to grab the torch. Gave you a little bonk there. Shake you up a little bit. Make sure you're paying attention. Sorry about that. So, all right. Just kind of squeezing some of the brown base color here on the edge. Get it to come over the edge. Clean that up a little bit. And I'll, I'll get it all the way when I hear in a few. But, all right. Let me get my hands clean. Got that brown all over me. It has a spring in the um, the arm of the uh, tripod, and so when I hit the spring, it makes a ding. It makes a fun little noise. So yeah, sorry about that. So I think we'll end this with a whimsy swipe for the last one. But go ahead and chat for a moment why this one kind of evolves kind of fun to see these and they'll do that for good it depends on how hot it is in your house or how thick your paint how much paint's on the canvas but they'll evolve for a good oh half hour or so i'm so you hear my cat she's wanting attention she's meowing <laughs> so this one's kind of more of a fall-esque kind of colors and then the first one is more kind of pink girly colors or just girl pink colors, not necessarily girly. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and move this one aside. We're going to go ahead and get our last one out. And so we have one last of these six by six inch canvases. And I get these at Michael's. They've had a sale here a while back. I think we're going to go ahead and do another one of those whimsy swipes. I don't often do them on this uh, deeper size, uh, the canvas with this deep sides. So let's see how this, as long as we swipe it over the edge quite a bit, it should work all right. There's something on my hand there. All right. A little bit of that dusty pink color, a little rose pink, a little bit of this teal. So same colors trying to use up some of this teal and such in the cups I had mixed up a little bit too much honestly but we'll do a swipe again kind of swipe them over the edge they're both teals the teal in the cup and this teal have silicone just getting little puddles all throughout and I really like this other pink as well. And this canvas is a little saggy. So I did not notice until I already started pouring. So hopefully it won't be too bad. But one thing you can do if you notice it before you start pouring to fix a saggy canvas like this is a, a couple of days before you're going to pour on it. Spray the back of it with a little bit of water and then let it dry and it'll dry. Um, it'll tighten up a little bit, but that's a little bit. I noticed that after starting to use it. So no big deal. All right. Get my palette knife out here. Get it cleaned off. Um, I think we're going to come in here at the bottom. All right, wipe it clean.
All right. Wiping it clean. And I'm going to come back through. Sorry, concentrating on here. I'm missing anything. Swiper, no swiping. Yes. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, I uh, The other day when I got dressed, so most of the time I wear what I call my paint clothes, but they're older clothes that are stains that I paint in. And I look down at, and I don't care if they match or anything. I just wear whatever paint clothes. You know, I'm at home. Not Nobody's going to see me. Well, I put on these clothes and then I look down and I realize I've got like pink shirt and red shorts and I look just like Dora. <laughs> so when you said swipe or no swiping, it kind of reminded me of that. So, all right, I'm actually going to come back through and just swipe just like the tip of my palette knife. How are you doing, Mr. Doughboy? I didn't, I, I read your comment and I didn't even greet you. Sorry about that. How are you doing? It made me think of me all wearing Dora clothes. <laughs> Silly. <laughs> How you been? Back, 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 back. <laughs> Loaded up. <laughs> I better be careful of singing the song. <laughs> <laughs> Might get copyright. <laughs> so now I'm going to come through with the uh, 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 blow just a little bit here, not too much. All right going to kind of help those edges a little bit but this is actually our last pour for today but we can watch it evolve and kind of chat for a moment uh the last few times i've done a live stream it's been so hot so it's kind of nice to do a live stream where it's not so miserably hot <laughs> but we'll watch that kind of evolve i'll go ahead and give it a little torchy torch all is well good good to hear I saw you were live the other day, Mr. Doughboy, but unfortunately it was uh, buffering when I went in there, but it was stuck on, it was like um, frozen on a screen. You were working on some bells, some of your coin bells. So that was cool to see. Uh, Mr. Doughboy likes to take coins and make them into all kinds of little cowboy hats and bells and all kinds of little things. It's really neat. So let me go ahead and uh, move this one a little bit to the side so we can pull out a couple of the other ones and show you real quick. But uh, so this week, we just kind of did all kinds of different techniques. Uh, if you're watching the replay, please let me know if you have any questions about the differences between like blooms and a traditional paint pour. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, next week, I think we're going to do, I'm going to paint on photo paper what I call painty paper, but we're going to do some uh, painty papers. And so I like to put paint on, to do the fluid acrylics paint pours on uh, photo paper. And then I cut them out and do different mosaics with them. I do all kinds of paper crafts. Uh, you can uh, collage with uh, so many stuff with the painted papers. So I wanna do some of those on next week's live stream, which will be at the same time, two o'clock uh, on Wednesday, Pacific Standard Time, two o'clock. And so next week we'll be painting on photo paper. So that's really fun. So let me go ahead and move this one aside just a little bit here. Ooh, spilt a little bit of that blue, but that's okay, that's okay. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and move this one. I'm uh, going to show you that one, how it's kind of been evolving. And then I wanted to go ahead and pull. This was the first one I did today. And it's kind of evolving and stretching and doing its thing. But it's real pretty one there. And then we'll go ahead and show you. Um, this one, I believe, was the second one I did on today's live stream. So very similar, the first two, but just similar technique, just uh, two totally different color palettes. This one was done with a napkin ring. That first one was done with a Gatorade bottle top. So, but yeah. First, you love the first one, second one, awesome. Mr. Doughboy is a hack, oh gosh. <laughs> more please. Okay, okay. How about one more? One more. Let me get these uh, pushed aside and I can do one more and that's it. That's all I have room for actually. So let me get, make some room because it's going to be a bigger grand finale, okay? Let's do one last grand finale. I'm going to have to move the tripod out so we let's show you real quick how that one's kind of moved and developed and done its thing. Okay, so I'm going to move the tripod up a little bit. Okay, turn it just a tiny bit. Okay, let me get out some of the yogurt cups. I have a 10 by 20 inch. Then it has to be the last one though. Because that's all I'll have room for. So, all right, I have a 10 by 20 inch. A big grand finale. Let's get the, all right. I'm going to have to move the um, the tripod just a little bit more to get it all in. Just a little bit more, guys. Sorry. Don't want to make you dizzy or anything. Sorry, it's getting all. All right. Let's focus back in. All right. Now we're going to do one last 10 by 20. Get it all the way in frame here. All right. All right. So what... I'm thinking, let's see what colors we have enough mixed up of. I think I want to do a split background. So I think I'm going to do like a darker blue on each of these uh, and then a lighter blue in the center there. That's what we're going to do. And then we're going to do kind of a blown. I have the smallest, world's smallest leaf blower. And we'll blow out kind of on both of these. So I'll show you here in just a moment. But then this will have to be the last one. I'm sorry. So, all right, let's get that spread out just a little bit. You're welcome. The, a big grand finale, big guy. I wasn't all ready to go anyway, so I thought, oh, might as well. Let's do another one. Have fun chatting with everybody. Yeah. Keep a hold of my palette knife here. All right. Get each one of these spread out a little bit. And then we'll get some, I'm thinking some maybe, um, of the lighter blue through the middle. And then we'll blow out some of those, um, maybe that brick red, a little bit of this um, till, I'm not sure just yet. We'll, get, we'll just start throwing down colors. How's that sound? So this is a 10 by 20 inch canvas. It is quite a big canvas. So get quite a bit of paint down there. Wipe my palette knife clean from that darker blue and then spread out that lighter blue. So the darker blue was, um, I believe, a phthalo, uh, phthalo blue. And then this lighter blue is Apple Barrel's Blue Cotton, which is a real nice kind of sky blue.
sorry about my reach, this pretty big one, just bring it right to the edge, right up to that blue. Now, neither one of these base colors had silicone, but some of these colors we're going to blow out do have silicone. All right. Need just a little bit more to go off that corner. All right. So now I'm going to take this red. It's kind of a deeper brick red. We're going to do a line where both of these colors meet. Both those reds meet. I mean, both the blues meet. We'll do blow out both sides of there. So I have the world's smallest leaf blower. It um, is USB. So that's what we're going to use. Um, coming in with uh, cheap paints, cobalt blue. A little bit of this um, teal that I mixed up. And then I think we'll come in with a little bit of this kind of mint lighter color. All right. Got to put a little bit of that darker. It's two different brands of phthalo blue. All right. Now I have this little guy. He's the world's small sleeve blower. He just hooks up to the USB port. He's quite a little strong guy. Uh, so um, he does make a little bit of noise. So if you've got uh, your uh, headphones in or anything like that, I am going to turn this on, but it's not too loud. So it's a little bit. So I'm not going to talk over it, though. So I'll take a little break from talking. You like uh, the. I'm not sure. Uh, Autocorrect, I think, corrected you on that one or something. <laughs> so, all right, I'm going to go ahead. What? Oh, Mike. Oh, okay. Duh. It took me a moment. Mike was a little bit faster on that one than I was. All right. So, I'm going to go ahead. So, I'm going to be coming in. I'm going to go ahead and make some elbow room here so I don't knock anything over. I'm going to be coming in kind of this way. Then, I'm going to be going back this way. And then, each, each side, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> so, all right, I'm going to turn this on now. Okay, I'm going to stop there because I can actually see something I would like to put. That red really is down at the bottom. I'm going to put just a little bit of that red across the top here because I want it to pop out there a little bit more than it is. But just a little bit, not too much because it, it was that first color we put. So it's kind of on the bottom. So you can always do a little bit and then realize, ah, I want to adjust it. No big deal. Going to come in with a little bit of red across the top on this one as well. Not too much because we have plenty of paint. All right. Just a little bit to, I want that red to kind of be popping off there. All right. And then they're going to come back in with this, guys.
All right, so now we did create quite a few air bubbles. So I'm gonna bring the torch in just to kind of pop some of those air bubbles we created. And you're not actually like torching the paint because you'll burn your paint, you'll create nasty fumes. I'm lightly going across the surface just to get those air bubbles. Okay, so now we can completely be done. But something I like to do uh, is I like to then come in with the uh, aquarium tubing and just kind of a few spots here, kind of blow it out a little bit. But you could totally, totally, you got air bubbles too, I bet you do. <laughs> I don't even want to ask. <laughs> Yes, wow, this one is just stunning. I really like how that red pops on that blue. Uh, that is actually from Flamenco Blue from Apple Barrel. Here, I've got it right here, actually. It was this one here is what that red was. So it's a little bit darker kind of uh, brick red. And they're all mixed just the same with the um, uh, Floetrol. So, all right. Well, I'm glad I did that one last one, that one last grand finale, because I think it turned out pretty nice. So nice little pops of red on that blue. I like the two-tone different colors of the blue, kind of breaks up the eye a little bit. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So it isn't completely in frame. We should push it over a little bit more, but that's okay. It's pretty much in frame. It's hard to get these uh, 10 by 20. They're a pretty long canvas. So it's hard to get them in frame on the camera. So all right, that is going to be the last one. How many did we do today? Two, four, six, eight, nine. I guess we did nine. Wow, that's pretty good. Nine in just over an hour and the plenty of chatting in between. So perfect. Awesome. So all right, we'll be back live next week. And next week, we are going to paint on photo paper. And I'm going to talk about what I do with it when I it's all done. I like to cut it up and collage. And um, I even can run it through my Cricut. If you pour on photo paper and let it dry, make sure it's real nice and dry. Then you can run it through your Cricut too. So that's just a die cutting machine. A Cricut is just a machine that cuts different shapes out. So yeah. Yeah, it does kind of look like a 4th of July parade. I was thinking a little 4th of July-ish. Yeah. What a grand finale. Yes, this one wasn't bad. Not bad at all. So I will in a couple of days. Uh, I don't like to take pictures right away because uh, I want to see if they're going to shift any. I like to show you guys more of like the dried results. So in a few days when they're mostly dry, I will take a picture and I'll put them on my uh, community tab. Last week's uh, pours are already on the community tab. So I will do that here in a few days. I'll take some pictures of these and let you know how they turn out. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. You guys are all so awesome hanging out with me every week. I really, really, really appreciate each and every one of you guys. So thank you, thank you, thank you. It means a ton to me. So uh, thanks for hanging out. And I hope you can hang out next week or again soon on a live stream. But I do have lots of videos coming out the next few days. I have the basics of hate pour series. I have a flip cup. And then I do have a couple of videos that not are not involved in the basics of paint pour series just to kind of break up the what's on the channel right now. I don't want it to just be the basics of paint pour series. So I do have a couple other videos as well coming out and the next few episodes of the Basics of Paint Pour series. So that's what will be on the channel for this next week. 
but we'll be live next Wednesday and we'll do painting on papers. And so, and I'll show you some of the dried ones that I've done in the past too. So, all right, thank you, thank you, thank you for hanging out. And I appreciate everyone. So, you know how I end every live stream, be the change you wanna see in the world, guys. It is, every time I say it, it just seems like it's even more and more and more important every week. So really, really be the change you wanna see in the world, guys. All right, have a great week. Thank you so much.